you are new to astrology, do not skip this intro. I need y'all to listen to this. But if you have a basic understanding of what astrology is, go ahead and skip to your sign because um, I make content for impatient people. That's why I don't have any intros or anything like that. I like to get to the point. What are we talking about? And in this video, I'm going to be talking about a basic interpretation of every zodiac sign because one i've been getting a lot of people who are starting to wake up to what is astrology and leaving old belief systems behind and again i want to kind of give a basic interpretation of each zodiac sign because people don't understand that they are made up of more than just one sign they hear an interpretation and they're like that doesn't sound like me and then they dismiss astrology completely because it doesn't resonate and they think it's fake or whatever it is that they believe in and so understand that one you are more than just your sun sign okay um if you look at your birth chart you will see just all of this stuff going on because again there's not just one interpretation, one personality. Um, just common sense would tell you 7 billion people or however many they tell us and 12 zodiac signs. You really think there's only 12 personalities? Like, come on now. The day that you're born matters. The time that you were born matters. The city that you're born matters. All of that changes your entire energy. So understand that. Um, again, I'm going to go through just a quick interpretation of each sign so you can kind of get a basic understanding and then go from there whenever you start doing your little research as to who you really are because astrology has legit changed my life and just woke me up to like people and how they are and why they do those things and you know people who annoy you and they're like oh why can't you just be like me because I do things like this well, it's because y'all are all made up of different um, signs and degrees and everything in your birth chart. And so again, that changes the energy of everything. And if you understand the basics first, then you can start to see people in a whole different light and be more accepting. I have gone from Judge Judy to like, I just, everything, <laughs> like everything is just like whatever now. Like, I just don't even care. Um, but again, I will start with... Um, the first sign of the zodiac, and that is Aries, of course. So Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, is one, a fire sign. So understand fire signs are those signs that do things very um, quickly, maybe impulsively, maybe impatiently. But also understand that fire is needed, one, because it puts pep in your step. And Aries, again, being that first sign of the zodiac, representing the first house in astrology, the house of self, the house of physical self, the house of physical vitality, um, everything is seen from there from like, again, how much energy you have to how you look um, to the kind of health that you have can be seen through the first house. And so Aries being that first sign, people who have Aries suns or their sun sign there or just born under that energy can have a higher energy, can be seen as like maybe an athlete, can be seen as those, um, you know, people who are just on the go all the time. Now, it doesn't mean, again, that every Aries is like this, but understand that Aries is naturally higher energy, faster energy, is ruled by the planet Mars, which represents um, everything that has to do with fighting, war, aggression, again, but again, physical energy. How much energy do you have that is seen again through that fire, fire sign? So it is a cardinal sign, meaning that it is the starter of things. It starts the spring season. It starts that new year. So as we can see in spring, all that new, that new, new stuff starts popping up, plants and things like that. Aries is also known for being the baby of the zodiac. Again, it's just being born. It's the first sign. So Aries can be known to be those kinds of uh, placements that throw temper tantrums and stuff like that. Um, I have seen that. Um, and so that's kind of a thing that I've noticed with Aries, Aries placements. Not that I don't have any Aries placements, but again, a very, um, you know, my, my way or the highway kind of thing. Um, but also understand that every zodiac sign is ruled by a different body part or rules over a different body part. So Aries rules over the head. Um, Aries... <laughs> You can know Aries for having either like a big forehead, a big head, um, headaches, migraines, things like that. But also balding is seen through Aries placements. So um, just know that uh, not just your Aries sun, but if you have Aries placements in your chart, those things can be seen from that energy. The positive aspect, of course, fire signs, cardinal signs, those starter of ideas that can start ideas, that can start businesses. Those are the positive aspects of it. Being very blunt can be seen also as a positive aspect because Aries is going to say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done. Um, and 
there are people out here who are going to move a little bit slower. And so when you have fire energy in you, Aries energy, competitive energy, leadership energy, those kind of qualities um, are positive. Aries isn't like a boss. You know, people who have Aries placements, they don't like to be told what to do because they're at the top. They're already like, I'm better than everyone. Why would I be beneath anyone? So I understand if that's you, that competitive nature, that leadership nature that comes from there too. But of course, the negative aspect of it, that blunt nature, Sometimes they say things that don't need to be said or said at the wrong time. Um, impulsiveness, again, it's ruled by Mars, so it can be a little bit more aggressive, maybe wanting to fight. Um, I don't know if y'all seen, I don't know if it was like a fake story or not, but I did see a story going on around, uh, on TikTok of CNN <laughs> put out an article that said this nightclub was um, discriminating against Aries and they weren't allowed to come into the club because they were having too many fights and noticed that it was coming from, again, Aries' son. So if you were in Aries, they were like, yeah, you can't come in because we feel like you're going to start a fight because, again, it is Mars ruled. So that's kind of where that comes from. But overall, that's kind of a general uh, energy of Aries. Moving on to the second sign of the zodiac, Taurus. So Taurus is an earth sign. Um, earth signs are a little bit slower. You know, a, a fire signs are quick, quick, quick. Earth is like, let me take my time. Let me see. Let me be a little bit more patient because earth signs are grounded. Earth is of the 3D of the material plane. So it rules over Taurus. It rules over the second house of astrology that has everything to do with um, your family, um, things that you value. It has everything to do with food, nourishment, um, also your speech because um, <laughs> Taurus rules over the throat. So everything that has to do with how you speak, what you put into your mouth. Um, it is also ruled by Venus, which means that it's everything that has to do with the beauty, um, appreciation of beauty through nature or natural things. So a lot of times Taurus placements, uh, men with Taurus placements could like natural beauty, no makeup. I don't want all of that extra. Um, they can be seen also for being very um, materialistic um, and not to say that, you know, I mean, it can be, you know, greed and things like that, but because it's Venus, it's luxury, it's nice things. Taurus likes nice things, quality things. You know, they're going to put money into those um, maybe more expensive appliances. I've seen, I know a Taurus son who spends a lot of money on like, like high quality, like cooking um, appliances and things like that. Because again, Taurus loves food. I noticed that people with Taurus placements love, love food, not just eating, but quality, like the top steak restaurants, the top notch, this, the luxury, that, that is Taurus type of energy too. And again, Taurus ruling over the throat can also lead to like, um, possible again possible things like uh, sore throat throat infections ear infections everything that has to do with like this area that is Taurus natured um, but a lot of times Taurus have really good voices um, like nice singing voices or just nice speaking voices or if you have second house placements you can be somebody who also has really good like speech um, but because it's earth energy just kind of wanted to note that people with earth placements and especially like i said taurus because it's so driven on material people see it as like a gold digger type of sign but it's not gold digger it is earth needing tangible things needing stability and security that is taurus energy so i have noticed taurus men especially um and again women too but Taurus men because i'm thinking of one in particular my friend is dating him he's works he works 24 7 like non-stop makes a lot of money but again the trade-off is it's also constant work all the time the positive aspect of course because it's a feminine sign um and i didn't mention aries being a masculine sign feminine signs are more emotionally based so they understand um how to appeal through emotions. Again, feminine does not mean woman. It means that you are more creative. It can mean that you are more emotionally aware, a little bit more emotionally sensitive and doesn't mean maybe you're a crybaby, but it means you pick up on people's emotions and you can communicate with them through there. Um, again, it's because it's highly feminine. It's more artistic, more beautiful. Um, but of course, that negative aspect of it because it's it's cautious in its patience, but it can also be too cautious to where it doesn't take risk. Um, people get frustrated because you're taking too long. It can be seen as a lazy sign because once it finds comfort, like it's going to stay there. And sometimes it stays in situations a little bit too long. So understand if you have Taurus placements, 
I have learned that people with Taurus placements don't move as fast as I want them to move, but understand that every aspect, it has its positive and negative. So earth signs help fire signs kind of slow down and then fire again helps earth speed up the process. So that is kind of a, a general energy of Taurus. Okay, Gemini. So Gemini is the third sign in the Zodiac wheel. So Gemini is the twins. Um, and so that duality, it's a sign that is um, known for one, uh, being an air sign. It's a communication sign. So Gemini energy is known for being those signs that talk a lot. It's very curious nature to ask, going to ask a lot of questions. It rules over the third house, which is the house of communication, which is the house of short distance traveling. Um, it is ruled by Mercury. And that third house is also the house of things like siblings and things like that. But Mercury, so anytime you hear Mercury retrograde, it's time to that third house of communication traveling and things like that that gemini energy quick always on the go constantly moving because air signs are always wanting to learn and gemini is known for having like superficial knowledge meaning it wants to know a little bit about everything so people with gemini placements can seem like they're maybe flaky or they don't know what they want to do but again it's just because it wants to do a little bit of everything again that curious natured sign it's also known as being like the child of the zodiac um they are a little bit more youthful. They can be uh, youthful as an appearance or either personality, childish or whatever. But I've noticed that Gemini placements have and Gemini sons have like a more um, like people think they're younger than they are. Um, it is a mutable sign, meaning that it's it can adapt and move in any situation that it needs to. It didn't mention Taurus is also a fixed sign. So fixed signs, meaning it's very stubborn, regimented, you know, just stuck in one place. But mutable signs can be those ones that are, um, again, very adaptable, always moving. Now, of course, the positive aspect of Gemini, I noticed that Gemini placements, people like to teach with this. They like to learn with this. Uh, having a curious nature is always good because you're going to ask the questions that people want to know. Like, you might be a little bit nosy because uh, Gemini is also known to be like gossipy. But again, always talking, always having conversation. Um, I know somebody who is married to a Gemini and says that they talk a little bit too much. But again, it's a curious sign. It just wants to know. And it always has to keep that conversation going. It's an air sign. It's a communication sign. Um, but again, the negative aspect of it, it can be seen, like I said, as being a gossip um, and a little bit of... Um, Again, just airy, not really knowing what it wants to do. Um, because it's ruled by Mercury, which is that thinking sign, they can be a sign too that is known for having like a lot of anxiety always in their head. Um, and so just to kind of watch out for that, I used... <laughs> <laughs> I used to hear it all the time from a friend, my anxiety, my anxiety. And I was like, oh my gosh, you always say that. She's a Gemini sun. And so now I understand, especially learning astrology, where that all comes from. So this is why I encourage people to learn, to understand why people say and do what they do. But anyways, moving on to the fourth sign. So the fourth sign in astrology is cancer. So cancer is another cardinal sign, meaning again, it's starting things. It starts the summer. So cardinal signs, again, are the starters of ideas, the starters of businesses. They can start things and not finish them. But again, that um, it's, an, it's a water sign. So meaning that it's more... Um, emotionally intuitive it's more intuitive in general so a lot of times people can confide in water signs they really people want to like tell them their problems they feel like they're drawn to them for some reason or they give that like nurturing type of energy because one cancer is ruled by the moon so the moon is the mother moon is nurturing moon is calmer it also rules over the fourth house in astrology which is the house of home which is the house of family which is the house of ancestry so cancer energy cancer sons can remember things of the past a lot from way far back again when you have cancer energy in you you can remember things when you were two three four years old and people are like how the heck do you remember that but again that's cancer that's cancer son you know maybe you want to stay at home a lot it's the it is the crab you know the crab goes inside the shell does it go inside the shell the crab is like always just again it's all to itself it's home is on its back so cancers again are more of home bodies it can be home bodies um and so that is something too that I know. I know a cancer um, son who is always home, like all the time, like no desire to leave, no desire to really travel, just always wants to be at home all the time. Um, and it's also 
like I said, it rules over the stomach. Um, women like who have any kind of issues with the stomach, the breast, um, those female motherly parts of you, just to kind of be aware of that. If you're ever dealing with some kind of situation in that area, it's it can come from, again, having the cancer placement, cancer sun. Um, the positive aspect, of course, like I said, it's that motherly nurturing type of nature. It can be somebody who maybe likes to really cook or take care of the kids, take care of the family. Um, but it also can be a negative aspect as in being a little bit more manipulative because that emotional intuition, the intuition can be, um, you know, if I know this about them and I feel this about them, then maybe I can get them to do this. Um, the feminine sign, again, it, it appeals to emotions. It can emotionally manipulate you. I've seen this happen several times. Oh my gosh, I have stories for days of, you know, somebody who was dating a cancer woman and the manipulation was out of control out of control. Like I was like, I cannot believe that you're even believing this. Um, but that's another story y'all. But again, cancer energy, water sign, cardinal sign, emotionally intuitive, emotionally aware, motherly nurturing ruled by the moon. Um, again, all of those things are seen through cancer energy. We're on number five. So fifth sign, the fifth sign in astrology is Leo, another fire sign, another um, sign that has to be spitfire all the time. Um, Leo rules over the fifth house of astrology, my favorite house of astrology, because I have fifth house placements, the fifth house of astrology that has to do with spotlight and attention and acting because leo is ruled by the sun so if you know any leos they like the spotlight they like the attention they like to tell stories they want to be just like the kids they are the fun ones they can be a little bit childish because the fifth house in astrology has to do again with creativity has to do with children has to do with things like theater and acting and again center stage kind of thing so when you have fifth house placements you can be seen as somebody who you know, isn't going to grow up anytime soon. You want to be a kid. You want to enjoy those things. You want to just have fun. Um, and again, because fifth house, I mean, fifth house is, uh, that house of, um, you know, I just, it's like a pleasure seeking house, pleasure seeking, casual dating, casual romance. That's also seen through fifth house, but it's a, it's a sign too, that, um, it rules over the, um, back. So the back and the heart, um, the spine, I believe too, but the heart, Leo, the heart, like in Wizard of Oz, you know, the cowardly lion, the heart, he didn't have heart because Leo, you know, see astrology is everywhere. Um, so Leo rules over the heart, any heart issues, back issues, good backs at the gym. If you look at somebody's back and it's like, it's all cut, they probably have Leo placements. Again, that fire sign, the athlete sign that can be seen through there. Um, again, like I said, attention seeking, fun, childish, um, the positive aspect, of course, it can be a very creative sign, but because Leo likes attention, um, it can be too attention seeking, you know, that can kind of get on people's nerves and it can also be a controlling sign too. you know, look at me, pay attention to me, do things for me, 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 me. Um, the sun is ego. So, I know somebody who has a lot of Leo placements in the first house of self. So what kind of personality do you think they have? Um, and so understand that it's a very spotlight attention-y. Again, not all Leos are like this, but that's a general energy of Leo. I think I kind of covered all that body part, planet, house, um, yeah, that's kind of it. Okay, so sixth house. So the sixth or the sixth sign in astrology is Virgo. So Virgo being a an earth sign, um, ruling over the sixth house in astrology that has to do with um, anything like that has to do with your day-to-day -day routines. Your health is also seen through um, the sixth house. And Virgo is ruled by the um, planet Mercury, which is, again, also rules over Gemini, you know, that always in your head, the anxiety um, that can be seen through uh, Virgo energy um it also rules over the intestines and so stomach issues can happen especially if you have a lot of mental stress and mental anxiety it can affect your stomach if you have sixth house placements which is a virgo house you can also have stomach intestinal digestive issues so just to kind of be aware of that um so virgo is the virgin 
um, or that woman who um, is all about like purity and cleanliness. Um, I've noticed that Virgo is also very critical, very analytical. Um, it can be all about hygiene, can be like OCD about things. Um, the perfectionist nature, again, always has its positive and negatives. I do know people with Vir Virgo placements who like things a particular way, want things done just like this. And it can be a great thing because Virgo is the analytical sign that it's very observant. It's going to scan for things, scan for imp imperfections so they can be, you know, like data um, inputters or people who like proofread things. That's a great thing to have because people like me who have a lot of fire in me, Earth, again, slows down and it takes this time and it looks, Virgo is going to be like, mm, scanning you know to make sure everything's right but again that too much wanting too much perfection um, or being too critical can of course turn people off so just to understand that I know some people in my family who <laughs> have Virgo placements and just always want to hover over your shoulder and you know say it has to be done like this and do it like this um, that can kind of turn people off so if you have Virgo placements understand that every sign every placement has this positive and negative but again they can be those people who are very into holistic healing um, health any kind of um, healing properties in general it can be anything that has to do with like working out it can be holistic medicine it can be like being a doctor and prescribing people things all of that is seen through virgo placements again that analytical nature the perfectionistic nature <sighs> kind of kind of tone it down sometimes though but again it's needed it's needed it's needed because people like me who move super fast can miss stuff and so that is why again we all are here to contribute something so virgos are here to contribute their um their eyeballs, their observant nature too. Um, okay, so seventh sign in astrology. So the seventh sign in astrology is Libra. So Libra ruling over the seventh house. Um, Libra is an air sign. Air signs, again, are the communicators of the zodiac too. Um, it rules over the seventh house in astrology that has to do with one, it's the house of marriage, but it's also the house of people other people relationships with other people libras in general bring people together libra is all about justice and equality and fairness and so a lot of times libras can be like judges or lawyers and stuff like that because they're seeking fairness and equality in everything it's another cardinal sign it starts the fall season so libras again can be this business starters start their own practice start their own business um they are ruled by Venus, which is that planet, again, of love and beauty. Um, the difference between a Venus Libra and a Venus Taurus is like Venus Taurus is beauty by nature and Libra is like man-made beauty. So like makeup, um, art, like man-made art, you know, paintings, drawings and things like that. So Libras can like to maybe do themselves up, fashion and stuff like that. Same thing with Taurus, you know, but again, that's nature beauty and man-made beauty. Um, the Libra rules over the lumbar, the back, the butt. So if you notice Libra placements might have a really nice butt, might have a nice backside or the focus is on their backside. Um, and they can be, uh, like Kim Kardashian, um, they can be people who, again, really love love, really love being around people. Um, maybe a little bit too much because like I said, every sign, every placement has its positive negative. You have to learn how to balance yourself. Libras can be people who really love love to where it like it's affecting their day to day because they really need to be in a relationship. They really need to be around other people. Um, I've noticed that with some readings that I've done with some clients who like that's their main focus. And I understand where it's coming from. Um, I don't know if y'all watch Love is Blind. Again, I like to watch everything um, because I'm observing behavior. And when I observe behavior, I look up people's signs and charts and, and start to see patterns. Um, but on Love is Blind, one of the girls, she was a Libra. Um, and like every episode, she was like, you didn't tell me you love me today. You didn't tell me you love me. Why don't you want to hang out with me? Why don't you want to be with me? And then when you see their sign, you're like, oh, that makes sense. So of course, the positive aspect of it is, is always wanting fairness and justice and equality. Um, you know, they're going to be those people who stand up for others. But again, on the negative side, it can be, like I said, it's, it's manipulative. It can be a people pleaser. People pleaser because, again, it doesn't want to rock the boat. It's like, okay, how can I negotiate this to be in both of our favors? Um, and then possibly saying yes to things that they don't want to when they really need to be saying no. So that's kind of a negative aspect to Libra. 
you know, they can just do whatever they need to do to be liked by other people. So if you have these placements, understand it's okay to put your foot down and it's okay that everybody doesn't like you, okay? But moving on, <laughs> we're going to the eighth sign in astrology that is um, Scorpio. So my favorite, because I'm a Scorpio rising. Um, and so the uh, Scorpio is a water sign. Again, more intuitive. Um, Scorpio, though, be, the difference between like Cancer and Scorpio, Scorpio is a little bit more dark, a little bit more like murky waters, you know, like swampy waters. Um, a lot of times people can confide in Scorpios, telling them secrets, telling them their deepest, you know, desires, as opposed to like Cancer energy, where you're just wanting to be mothered and, and nurtured and, you know, like just babied. Um, Scorpio energy is like, I have to tell you this bad thing that I did. And, you know, and then Scorpio is like, tell me what it is because it's all about secrets it's all about hidden things um a scorpio rules over that eighth house in astrology that has to do with anything that has to do with one um other people's money shared finances taxes inheritance death um that life and rebirth constant transformation things like the occult which the occult means hidden hidden knowledge so things like astrology things like tarot anything that um you know isn't uh just like the everyday common knowledge. Um, and so Scorpio likes to dig for truth. Scorpio is known for being um, possessive, obsessive, jealousy. Um, it's also ruled by Mars, which is that aggressive nature, that fighting nature. But it's also ruled by Pluto, which is that planet of power, wanting power, wanting to be on the top. Like, you're not going to get this. I'm going to get this. And it can be so obsessive and possessive to where it's going to do whatever it takes again to get to the top. It can be a very revenge seeking sign too. Can't say that I haven't had those thoughts before, you know, wanting to get people back for what they did, how they treated you that can be seen through there. Um, it's another fixed sign again, fixated on whatever it is, very focused on whatever it is. Um, it can be positive or negative, you know, fixated on a goal. I'm going to meet my goal or fixated on, I'm going to get you back, whatever it takes, however long it takes. That is fixed energy it can be like a little bit stubborn too. Um, but again, the positive aspect of it is, is of course, it's a, it's a sign that is very intuitive. You cannot lie to people with Scorpio placements because they're going to dig for the truth. So Scorpio, if you're Scorpio sun, like if you feel that intuition, you're going to keep on going, keep on digging until you find out the truth. You don't want to be lied to. You can't lie to. You cannot lie to Scorpio intuition. They're going to, I'm telling you, I'm going to keep saying dig and find, dig and find. I just had a friend this morning send me a text that she was like, guess what I found? Who's connected to who? I found him through this person's Facebook, this person's mother's Facebook. Like, I mean, she just kept on going like, digging down the web okay so just understand scorpio energy and where that comes from it can kind of go to the extreme sometimes um but again it's depending on the entire person but again the negative aspect of it of course nobody wants to like be on the brunt end of receiving some kind of revenge or intense possession or intense obsession or secrecy being very secretive about how you are how you move um private it can be um a little bit more reserved a little bit more shy i've noticed that um as a scorpio rising even though this is a sun sign video but as the rising sign because it's outwardly outwardly um energy towards the public or when you're out not uh, with your people with strangers um i'm more quiet more reserved um and i don't really go up to people and start talking again scorpio is going to look at everything make sure everything's safe i don't trust you i don't trust you i don't trust you that's scorpio type of energy so if that's you understand we share the same energy so um but yeah overall that's kind of the the general energy of the sign um and it's also that scorpion you know the stinger it's gonna get you so that's where that you know little animal comes from and that's the energy of that animal um the ninth house so the ninth house and the the ninth sign in astrology Sagittarius. So Sagittarius energy, the archer, you know, the archer with the little, um, you know, bow and arrow or whatever, it's going to hit its target. So that ninth house energy, it is a fire sign. Of course I have, um, I'm a Sagittarius stellium. So I have a, a lot of Sagittarius energy in one um, aspect of my chart. And so 
fiery energy again really impulsive and patient like get to the point um Sagittarius <laughs> is another mutable sign again it can adapt to whatever whatever it needs to do that's what's the traveler um it rules over that ninth house in astrology that has to do with philosophy that has to do with foreign travel foreign culture um higher learning higher education people who get masters PhDs people who just want to keep learning just to learn um, that's the difference between Gemini energy, its sister sign, where it wants to learn a little bit about everything. Sagittarius wants to go deep. Like, why are we here? What is life? What's the meaning of life? And it just keeps going and going and going. Um, and it's also, like I said, that mutable energy that's constantly on the move. Traveling is seen through the Sagittarius house. So always on the go. So I've been told, especially at one time in my life where I was just, I couldn't sit down at all. <laughs> to um just kind of chill but no it always wants something new Sagittarius is all about new it's all about fun it's all about like open to any kind of opportunity and so just to understand that Sagittarius um is ruled by or rules over the the thighs you know them legs so Sagittarians can have really nice thighs or have like uh very prominent thighs um I trained someone who's a Sagittarius son and she has really big um what are these called freaking quads her quads are like super huge um but again that positive aspect of it of course it's the person who's going to be very optimistic because it's ruled by jupiter so jupiter is that planet of of expansion it's all about um knowledge and philosophy good luck good fortune so a sagittarius around you can be that person who's going to be more optimistic going to tell you look on the brighter side of things um and people don't want to hear that all the time in all aspects of life, but it is good to kind of pep people up sometimes. And it's always ready to, again, do something new. Like, let's try something. As somebody who has a lot of Sag energy, that Sagittarius can bring that part out of you. Maybe you would have never done that thing in your life, gone to that place until you went with the Sagittarius. So it's okay to be around people who are different from you. Again, we all are contributing something to other people because if we had all the energies inside of us, both positive and negative, oh my gosh, you'd be chaotic inside. So we all have a gift to give other people. And I give the gift of new opportunities because I always like to do something different. But of course, that negative aspect, Sagittarians can be known to be very preachy, very teachy, because again, it's always learning and it's that deep philosophical nature. You could be like, I learned this thing and you must learn this thing too. And so you get on the soapbox and you start going and going and going. You can be very blunt. Again, fire, blunt natured. I know I have ruffled a lot of feathers with my Sagittarius energy, but if you're a Sagittarius son, you could be that person again, who's very blunt impulsive impatient um Sagittarius is known for being like a fighter too I know a lot of Sag sons who um have fought people in public um and so again it's a more aggressive type of nature um but still has good aspects to it um but yeah so I already kind of covered everything 10th sign the 10th sign in astrology Capricorn so Capricorn is ruled by one is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is that planet of discipline, of structure, of um, obstacles. And so a lot of times Capricorns can go through a lot of things. Um, being that earth sign, again, that earth sign, that more grounded sign, but again, more obstacles, more um, lessons learned um, in different areas of life because it's trying to teach you hard work. It's trying to teach you patience. Um, it is also that sign that rules over the 10th house in astrology. The 10th house in astrology is people call it the career house, but it's more of like your public image, your public like visibility. Um, you know, you could have a job in one area, but people know you for this other thing. Um, but it could be uh, also represented like uh, by father because the, the fourth house is mother is directly across from it. So 10th house is father. Um, and so you can be somebody who's a little bit more serious, a little bit more disciplined. Um, people who follow the rules a lot. I've known Capricorns. I make fun of them because they're the rule followers. They're going to be the ones who put the cart back. You know, um, when you're at the grocery store, they're going to be like, hey, you can't do that kind of thing. But again, every sign has something positive to contribute um, because it, it will be anarchy if we were all just doing whatever we wanted to. That Capricorn is going to come in and be like, hey, we're not doing all that. This, These are the rules. This is how it is. Um, I've known that Capricorns, um, especially if they're parents, they're not the friend parent. They are the 
I'm going to feed you. I'm going to clothe you. I'm going to house you. And that's it. Like that's our relationship. So they can be more serious natured, you know, because again, it's all about hard work. I got to work for my family. I got to work for this money. Earth signs, earth signs want the tangible things. They want the stability. So they're going to focus on those things. They're very disciplined. Notice, in, especially in the gym, Capricorns are going to be same time, same day, every day working out. Like there's no breaking their structure, their routine. Um, it's also, it rules over the skeletal system, the bones, the knees. Um, I have noticed that people who have Capricorn energy or Capricorn sun, they can have knee, uh, like knee pain, skeletal pain, their bones constantly breaking bones. Uh, I had seen this guy on my Twitter who I follow or we follow each other. And he was like, can somebody help me? You know, I keep breaking my bones all the time. Um, and then I looked up his birthday and he's a Capricorn. So again, every sign represents a different body part. So that's why I just really harp on this stuff. Um, but again, the positive aspect, of course, like I said, they're going to be very structured, very serious. Like, let's get this thing done. They're going to follow the rules. They're going to do what's right. But of course, that negative aspect, again, the earth signs can be slow, can take their time. When you're too serious about things, you're too, you know, it's pessimistic too. It's known for pessimism as opposed to Sagittarius, which is optimism. Capricorn is pessimism. So they can be those people who see the negative in things like, oh my gosh, like I have a lot of stories about that too. Capricorn energy, Capricorn moons, Capricorn suns and risings. Like they are, have that negative type of mindset sometimes where they just look at the darker side of things and negative side of things. And so again, that's where the Sagittarius can come in and kind of pep those people up, but that's kind of the overall uh, general, you know, energy of this sign. Again, uh, also the the goat is the goat in um, in astrology, so they're that's their sign. The eleventh sign in astrology. Let me take my time for this one. Aquarius. Aquarius is the eleventh sign in astrology, which is another air sign, another communication sign. Um. Aquarius is the sign that is the connector of people because the 11th house is the house of um, like large social groups, large networks. And so Aquarians can be people who know everybody. Now, not to say I know everybody, but I kind of know everybody. Um, and if you follow me on social media, you know, my background is in music. And so you'll see a lot of pictures of me with some celebrities or rappers or their managers or whoever. Like we just know a lot of people, but again, popular loners. Because Aquarius likes to isolate. It's known for detachment. I know people. We know people. But are they friends? No, they're just more of acquaintances because we're the connectors. We are the people who bring two different dynamics together. I connect people all the time. I'm always tagging people. Hey, y'all should work together. Y'all should do this. Y'all should do that. Um, and so understand, again, if you really want to build your network, find an Aquarius. Because they probably know somebody. Um, again, but it's a fixed sign. You know, fixed signs, meaning I'm very fixated on my opinions, on how I feel about things. Um, it can be known to be a little bit stubborn, um, but it can be also a sign that is known for having a God complex, you know, um, because it's an air sign, because it's an intellectual sign, it's known for being one of the smartest signs of the Zodiac, um, because we're almost like out of this 3D world. We're out here. We already know a lot of things. And so it can have a God complex of either I'm smarter than all of you guys, I'm better than all of you guys. Um, and so, you know, again, you learn yourself to find balance, but <laughs> understand that. Um, Aquarius is also a sign that rules over um, your your calves. Like, you know, I have, I'm sorry, but I have really good calves. I got really good calves and I just want to thank my Aquarius son for that. Um, but again, it's also the, um, the lymphatic system too. And so the nervousness can come a lot too from, uh, you know, the Aquarius. Our minds are out there like out there if you know any aquarians that we can be known to be like weird because uranus um is our planet um and so it's everything that has to do with weird things saturn also rules over uh, traditionally rules over aquarius but uranus is different it's weird it's unique it's um out of nowhere you know we can say things out of nowhere be like what the heck did you just do what the heck did you just say why did you come in here looking like that like i wear this to the mall like, I just, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't care, honestly. So that is seen through Aquarian nature. But again, it's very futuristic, very innovative. Um, because Aquarius is 
so far ahead, a lot of times people can miss um, perceive them as like being a little bit too weird to where what they're saying is like that there's no way that that is going to be a thing or that's a thing or that's coming. But we know we have insight, we have the gift of that future intuition. So I'm not going to say every single Aquarius, you know, is somebody who you need to look to as some kind of prophet. But a lot of times, if you are somebody who is already thinking ahead, AI, um, technology, some kind of future robotic type of thing, space, um, you know, all of that is seen through Aquarius nature. So that is where that comes from. Um, and of course, the positive aspect of it is uh, being the connector, being somebody who's going to bring people together. Um, also, uh, like I said, that future intuition, like I, if I could pull up some receipts, my old tweets, stuff that I was like, this is happening, this is coming. And everyone's like, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. And they're dismissing you. Um, but Aquarius is also astrology. So a lot of Aquarians become astrologers. They become people who are a part of space, or um, astronomy, uh, NASA, all that kind of stuff is seen through Aquarius energy. But of course, the negative aspect, um, there's no negative aspect to being an Aquarius. We're perfect. Um, but yeah, that godlike complex um, and the stubbornness, you know, the stubbornness of just like I'm right and you're wrong. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of something I've experienced throughout my life. People thinking I'm weird or different or whatever. But now and astrology has told me I'm fine. I'm perfect. I'm just great the way that I am. So if you're an Aquarius sun, hey twin. Lastly, we are on Pisces, another one of my favorite signs of the zodiac. I tend to attract a lot of Pisces energy, a lot of Pisces suns, because we're the last two signs of the zodiac. And I didn't mention Capricorn, Sagittarius, Aquarius, and Pisces are the last four signs, and they're the spiritual ones. They are the more spiritually aware signs. Now, it does not mean that if you are other sun signs that you cannot be like this. I'm saying if you embody these signs, if you have more of these signs, you can be more spiritually inclined or lead that way. Um, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. Pisces is another water sign. Now, the difference between that... Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Pisces is like the ocean. Pisces is like everything water. Pisces embodies all signs. So they can get along with all type of people. They attract all type of people, which also entails that they can be um, those signs that pick up on a lot of energy. And so they need to kind of um, be alone or isolated a lot of times because once they are around a lot of people, they can feel things. And because they attract so much, they can be those people who are like, oh my gosh, I got to get away. Leave me in my solitude so I can recharge. Um, it is um, a sign that rules over the 12th house in astrology, which is the house of separation. It's the house of the subconscious, your dreams. It's also the house of isolation. It can be isolation through hospital, isolation through jail, isolation through you becoming a monk and you want to go live on the mountain somewhere. Um, all that is seen through that 12th house energy. It's also a very creative sign because it receives a lot of downloads and it's highly intuitive and is ruled by Neptune, which again is that creative sign can be a little Dululu too, but a lot of times people who have Pisces placements or a Pisces sun can be those people who are very inclined to like music because it takes a lot of creativity to make music. It can be those signs who do things like Disney movies and um, that weird, unique type of stuff. I don't know if y'all have watched Midnight Gospel on Netflix. All of those like weird and different things can be Pisces type of energy. It's very unique. It's very spiritual. It's it's like the turtle from um, Kung Fu Panda, you know, just like sitting there or that little, I think it's like a raccoon or something, that other thing on Kung Fu Panda where it's like just the, the teacher. It's a spiritual teacher. It's um, highly intuitive, emotionally aware, like it feels things, it knows, it's a feminine sign. It's going to pick up on, you know, if you, if they're like, what's going on with you and you're like, I'm good, I'm fine. No, they're going to know, like, no, you're not. Like, what is it? And so- when you have that water energy, that Pisces energy, you can pick up on those kind of things too. Um, Pisces uh, rules the feet. So Pisces, take care of your feet. Get those regular massages. A lot of feet pain can come if you have Pisces placements. I have noticed that too. I look at everything whenever it comes to astrology. I'm going to look at your entire makeup, scan you from top to bottom. I'm going to look at your feet. If I know you're a Pisces sentiment, look at your feet and see how you're treating your feet. 
Okay, because again, it's the last sign. It keeps everything. If you don't have feet, you can't stand up. So it's a foundational. It's a foundational. So if you have Pisces energy, you are the foundation of everything. Um, but again, that positive aspect of, again, that feminine sign, that emotional intuition, the spirituality, they can be the healers. They are the healers of the Zodiac. There's a debate on whether Jesus Christ was a Pisces. You know, when you think of Pisces, you think of those two fish. In the Bible, you think of the two fish um, feeding people, helping people, healing people, washing of the feet. So all of that symbolism, that's Pisces type of energy. But of course, the negative aspect, because it's the two fish swimming in opposite directions, it can be a sign that just doesn't know where to go. It doesn't know how to choose a side. It's just very like in la-la land. It can be delusional. It can have um, an aspect to it to where maybe the imagination goes a little bit too haywire, you know, or again, the laziness, because it's just like, whatever, who cares? I've already mastered this world, this realm. Why do I need to do any of these kind of things? And so that is also seen through Pisces energy. Um, again, that Neptune can bring delusion, but it can also bring creativity, spirituality, all those kind of things like that. I think I've kind of covered the basics of everything. Kind of covered the elements, whatever. Anyways, y'all, that's kind of a general understanding of each sign, each place. And of course, I can go very, very in depth with all of this stuff. But if you would like an interpretation of your entire birth chart, because that is what I do. I interpret birth charts, behaviors, life events. Now, I do not do predictions, but a lot of times I see more clients whenever something is happening with them. Either they're going to move, either they get a divorce, either they're going to get married, um, they want a career change. There's something like life circumstances, I can do that. I can tell you why those things are happening, where it's coming from in your birth chart. Um, and again, once you apply the energy of the sign to the planet and you understand the energy of the planet, you just put two and two together. That's why people are the way that they are. So understand that y'all but um anyways i cannot believe i got through this entire video i'm not going to edit it i just kind of want to just put it up there because people are always like what sign is this and what does this mean and what does that mean this video is for that so if you are somebody who doesn't feel like explaining send people this video okay and then send them to my website and then go ahead and hit me up on any social media platform if you want to talk if you want to chat youtube I just feel like YouTube and all my social media platforms give a, a kind of a general surface level of the depth that I can go to with whenever it comes to astrology. So if you like an in-depth, the secrets, the real secrets, the I can't believe you knew that from knowing that, then that's where we can talk one-on-one -on -one and talk about it. But YouTube, very surface level, and I just like to get to the basics. So anyways, y'all, thank y'all so much for listening. Um, and yeah, I'll see you on the next video.